but I always, I always explain my illness like this. So think of the happiest feeling like your wedding day or when you get a new dog or you like the happiest feeling, your first kiss. And that is the mania. That was Grace, a 31 year old woman diagnosed with bipolar disorder. Grace is an avid film viewer, but is also critical of how mental illness is depicted in fiction. Grace is not her real name, by the way. She asked that I not use her real name because of the stigma towards mental illness. Think of the saddest thing that's ever happened to you and the pain that you, the physical pain that is in your heart because of that, whether it's a, a death or a breakup or anything like that. And that is the depression that you feel. I'm also an avid film viewer and I've continued to witness stigma towards mental illness. The first film I saw in theaters since the COVID-19 pandemic was a horror movie called Old. In the film, a character with schizophrenia becomes violent, stabbing a man to death and slashing another with a knife. Grace hasn't seen this film, but she's seen plenty of others that take a similar approach. I watch movies every day, <laughs> all the time. And it, every time we watch a movie, they always, I would say 100% of the time somebody says something or they're a bad guy. They'll, they'll say, oh, they've been diagnosed with something or, oh, they take a medication. Anytime they're in jail or in prison or whatever, and they're, they're talking about the bad guy, they go, well, has he been diagnosed? Why do you think it's so common in horror? Because if you think about it, um, so the things that people are afraid of, um, most afraid of are things like demons, monsters, snakes, sharks, and um, people that act erratically. So it kind of puts them in that category as a monster. Indeed, a 2014 article from medical journal The Lancet found that horror movies reflect societal fears. This includes fear of people with mental health problems. According to the Treatment Advocacy Center, this fear derives from the belief that mental illness causes violence, which becomes reinforced by horror movies. I worked in hospital settings for my whole career simultaneously as an instructor at major universities, NYU too. I was on faculty there for a while. Dr. Joseph Amato, a psychologist with over 30 years of experience, tells me that this is sensationalism. This should not, this should not be uh, a mystery. Not all schizophrenics are, are dangerous. By far, most schizophrenics are uh, harmless. The National Institute of Mental Health estimates that between 0.25 and 0.64% of Americans have schizophrenia, and about 2.8% are believed to be bipolar. The National Library of Medicine found that 3.2% of patients with schizophrenia and 8.4% of bipolar individuals committed a violent offense. But for Grace, those aware of her diagnosis only see the diagnosis. I started dating this guy once and he goes, oh yeah, I know you're crazy. And I'm like, what? <laughs> Excuse me? Not all depictions of mental illness promote stigma. Grace informed me of Words on Bathroom Walls, a romantic drama where the main character is schizophrenia. Despite this, Grace does not believe that the entertainment industry has improved in handling mental illness. It's still the same movies, still the same shows. I really, like, I have such little faith I really don't think. I honestly, I think I'll have to hide it for the rest of my life. My, my livelihood depends on it. My money depends on it. Um, my relationships depend on it. The irony is there's perhaps a better horror story from the perspective of those with mental illness. A 2018 study in Denmark found that among those diagnosed, men were 50% more likely to be victims of a crime and women were 64% more likely. And that's compounded by the internal battles they have to face. There is enough horror in, in true uh, illness. You know, it's there. It is, it is a horror story. But it's not an exploited horror story. It, 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 it is the lived experience of the voices telling you you are bad. I mean, that is horrible. I'll tell you, experience in the hospital, I was 
a hundred times more afraid of the people that worked there than the people that were in there with me. When you're in the hospital, it's these people, they, they have so much power. You don't get any visitors until a very small portion of the day and they have to be checked in and out. All of your belongings are in a locker and you have to ask permission to get them. You have no privacy. The bathroom door is basically a piece of cardboard and you're at the mercy to the care of these people. While Grace holds a bleak outlook towards depictions of mental illness, she did acknowledge a potential solution towards battling stigma. Honestly, honestly, Matt, you can't blame them because if we're not out in the public talking about it, how else are you going to get um, educated? You're going to learn about it on movies and TV. So we don't really stand a chance as long as we have other people speaking for us. Grace may not want her identity known, but she is open to making her story public. This is her story told by her a story that may educate others about mental illness.